What's up guys, welcome to another video and today we're going to be exploring Axios, how we can use Axios in Create React app. Okay, first thing first, I'm going to go ahead and import React. And once I have React, I'm going to go ahead and create a React component. And there you guys go, I end up having a React component called app and I import React from the React library and I'm exporting my component and now I'm going to go ahead and start my React application. And there you guys go, I see something like welcome to my app. But let's head over, let's tap inside Google, let's tap Axios MPM and click on the first link that you saw. All right, so once we get into this page, let's stay here for a second. What is Axios? Well, Axios is a promise-based HTTP client for both the browser and the server side, which means this is something that not only you can use inside Create React app, but you can also use it inside uh, the Node.js Node itself. And it's something that is fully, fully supported by most of the common browser out there, even IE itself. So we're gonna go ahead and, and, and copy this link right here. And once we copy it, I'm gonna stop my Recure your application and paste this link in there. Make sure you do dash save dash capital S just to save it inside your package.json in case somebody in the future would like to install this package as well. So I can go ahead and do npm start and that should be able to start my application and I should see my application start with no error. It's going to take a second. And there you guys go, my application start. Welcome to my app. There's no error and I'm ready to go. Now, how can we use Axios? First thing first, we need to import Axios. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And once we import the Axios, in order for us to make any HTTP call, we need to make it inside a React lifecycle called component did mount. Once I'm inside a component did mount, I can go ahead and call Axios like that to invoke it. But this works two ways. I can either do get or I can feel free to do Axios. Once I'm inside this parenthesis, I can pass it an object. Once again, an object. And within that object, I can pass it the URL I'd like to fetch. And the second thing I can do is pass it the method that I'd like to do, which is get. And now remember, if you guys read the description about Axios, they said Axios is a promise-based HTTP client, which means whatever response they're going to return to you, it's going to be a promise page, which means I can go ahead and do that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we invoke Axios and then remember it's a promise. So we hand over the first successful case and the second one is in case there is any failure. We haven't tell Axios where to go and get the data yet. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and, and find a website online called JSON placed older TP code, whatever it sounds like. Well, this is a free website where you can make an HTTP request to get some random data. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go, as you guys can see down here, it said fake online recipe for testing and prototyping serving 200 million requests per month. So once I'm on this website, I'm going to keep scrolling all the way down wherever it said resources and on the resources, I'm going to click on the user. If you want to get more information, you can, for example, post, there's a hundred posts or user, there is 10 user, but I'm going to go ahead and get the user itself right here. Okay. So I'm going to click on user. And once I clicked on it, it gave me this URL that I can copy and paste it inside my Axio URL down here. What this is going to do is this is going to go over and get this data that is over here. And once I get this data, it's going to return it as a pro as, as a promise and I can handle it in this case. And in case there's an error, I can also handle the error. Now, one last thing I'd like to mention about Axios is the way it returns the, the data is it's first we turn the response, which means this is going to be information about the response that's coming in. And if I want to get the data, I can just do response that data. And this is going to go ahead and get me every single data that I want to work with it in case there's an error for now i'm going to go ahead and alert something i can say oops there is an error all right let's give this one a try guy and see what happened okay so when we refresh our application we should be able to see all the 10 users that we just fetch and there you go ladies and gentlemen this is every single user that i just fetch now if i want to display every single of these 10 user within this page i can go ahead and set this value inside my state i can do this that set state down here and I can set all right this is going to be the user and I can set the value of the response like that and once I have this set this is gonna set this value inside my state now once the value set inside my state of course I don't have a state yet I can declare a state like here and the value that's gonna be coming is gonna be the user object that's gonna be an array of user and then down here I can feel free to kind of loop over this this array All right, 
and I can display every single user inside a P tag. And this one's gonna be user. I could just say user name and pass it an object. And then remember we are looping, so we can say, all right, this is gonna be user and this is gonna be the index. And then within that user itself, I can do user and this gonna be equal to an object. So within that object, I can say user.name just to get the name of every single user. So user.name that should be able to get the name of every single user. And let's give this a try and see what happened. And ladies and gentlemen, as you guys can see, this is the name of every single user. I was successfully able to pull data from this endpoint using Axio, which is a promise based HTTP client, both for the server side and, and, and for the browser side. And it's something that is supported for most of the common browser out there. Now the app is complaining about the key pro the key itself. So what I mean is we need to pass a key object here that is unique. And the whole idea we need to do this, it's just for React virtual dump to be able to do its calculation correctly. So it doesn't re render this element over and over. And ladies and gentlemen, this is everything about how to use action.